Homecoming weekend has come to an end with two games going into overtime, which made an entertaining three days of action in Tom Gola. Hello, I'm Gia Lancey. And I'm Tyler Small. Both the men's and women's hopes for a perfect season did not come true this year, but both have much more promising beginnings to the upcoming season. You're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explorer Athletics Sports Line. Welcome to Sportsline. I sat down with men's water polo players Keegan Riley and Joey DeFusco to talk about the end of their senior season. And later, we'll see the full highlights from both the women's and men's season openers from homecoming weekend. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline Top 3. Number 1. In what could very well be her final game in Tom Goal Arena, Senior Katherine Woods broke the all-time assist record in school history. This record has been held by Molly Thatcher with a grand total of 4,309. Woods entered the game needing 25 assists to break the record, which seemed to be no problem for the senior who averages nearly 11 assists per set. Her impressive feat proved to be a key for the Explorers team who needed a victory over the 9-3 St. Louis Billikens. But I won't step in your toes, Gia. Let's hear about number two. You're killing me, Small, but number two. Volleyball has clinched a playoff spot for its second straight year. The Explorers are firmly in the fifth spot of the playoffs with a chance to move to fourth spot if George Washington drops its last two games. LaSalle has one final game against Duquesne to finish up the regular season. And number three, junior goalie, goalkeeper Claudia Jenkins was named to the Atlantic 10 Women's Soccer All-Championship team. Jenkins made nine saves and only allowed one goal in the two full games in the Explorers were in the playoffs. Jenkins was the first explorer to earn this honor since five explorers had in their championship run in 2017. Jenkins received multiple A-10 weekly defensive honors throughout the season, and we will have to see if she earns more as the season ends. We will have more on the women's soccer team later in recaps. Yeah, so I mean, both ladies, Thatcher and Wood, for volleyball, are one and two for assists um, all time mm -hmm. and assists per set. So that's pretty cool that they both have that, and I mean, when Thatcher was playing, we didn't even have like an established team whatsoever. Yeah, and that's the key right there. Wood maybe has the upper hand on her for um, career and Definitely. just in total. But those assists per game probably are, assists per set, excuse me, probably aren't going to be going up for Wood in just one more game, and plus the po postseason as well. But eleven point seven is tough to beat right, for Thatcher. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, Claudia Jenkins is her the first time ever that she's gotten this honor. I mean, of course she's gotten a, a bunch of different yeah. honors this season. But, I mean, she's still a junior. We still have yeah. one year left with her. And that's going to be key for this rebuild. It was such a great defense for the Explorers. And Claudia, with a, such a great regular season, they wouldn't have won in the playoffs without her. Definitely. I agree. Um, so that's our top three. Now let's see how our team did this in this week's recaps. Women's Volleyball hosted Dayton and St. Louis this past weekend as their season is coming to a close. The battle against Dayton was one of the closest LaSalle had had all season. The Explorers were able to get the upper hand at the second set, but ultimately fell short in the last two sets, giving Dayton the match 3-1. to one. Next up, the ladies faced St. Louis for their senior day. Not only was it a day for the seniors, it was a day for record-breaking and clutch plays. The first set saw LaSalle at an early 12-2 lead, which eventually bursted up to a 25-14 win. Though the second set was a closer match, the Blue and Gold ultimately took the lead again 25-23. Again, Early on in the third set, senior Katie Wood, broke LaSalle's all-time assist record, passed the previous record of 4,309 assists. Though St. Louis were able to come back and force a fifth set, LaSalle ultimately took the dub over St. Louis in a very exciting senior day. Men's basketball kicked off their season at home this weekend, taking on the Iona Gales. Producer Steve Silvestro has the coverage. On Saturday, November 9th, LaSalle men's basketball team hosted the Iona Gales for their season opener on homecoming and family weekend. The team swapped points early until the Explorers caught fire offensively and defensively, going in a 22-2 run, including 14 points in the paint. Iona's Tejon Agui worked the Gales back into the game, along with a three from Isaiah Ross just before the buzzer sounded. To narrow the Explorers' lead, 
to 41 to 23. The second half did not start well for the Explorers as Iona started on an 18 to four run to narrow the lead to just four. Junior David Beatty picked up for the blue and gold as they would not forfeit the second half lead until five seconds remaining in the game when Iona's Isaiah Washington hit a three to even the game at 64. In overtime, both the Explorers and Gals defense tightened up. Beatty was the only player to break through the defense to make the only field goal of the extra period. Beatty's 15 points led the Explorers to a 70 to 64 win over Iona. Freshman Brandon Stone had 12 points in his collegiate debut along with sophomore Ed Croswell's 12 points. Here's what Coach Ashley Howard had to say after the game. You know, regardless of the wins, it's all about are we getting better, right? There, there are teams this year that are, win a lot of games early that'll, that'll fade in the end. I felt like we lost, but I felt like we got better as the season went on. So that's our only goal here. For Sportsline, I'm Steven Silvestro. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a great game to be at. I mean, you definitely felt the energy from the team and the fans. I mean, obviously, you're, you're one of the number one fans over here with this jersey that he insisted on wearing. Yeah, obviously. I mean, it, I got to finally bring it out for this season. It was yeah. a lot of fun, but just what you saw in those highlights right there, it's going to be the Stone, who had such a great performance in his first game, and Croswell, mm -hmm. who we already knew about. That front court is going to be the center of this team. They are going to be what they build their offense around, just going in and out. They were both unstoppable in this game, two of the three leading scorers along with Beattie. So, I mean, if this is to see these, this tight game against Iona, who was in the NCAA tournament last year, won the MAC. I mean, that's a very impressive win in front of the crowd that you were talking about. But yeah. Iona just was shooting from three the oh entire game. Oh, my God. Game. Literally, they only took threes <laughs> the entire game. But, you know, what are you going to do? All right. Well, that's you. Yeah, well, to get back to that, yeah. on Wednesday, the Blue and Gold traveled to the Palestra to play at UPenn. Sophomore big man Ed Croswell got the scoring started, but the Quakers slowly started to take over the game. Unfortunately, LaSalle wasn't able to keep up as they lost the game 75-59. to the Explorers tried to go undefeated to start the season as they picked up in front of a homecoming crowd against the Robert Morris Colonials. I went down to the game to get the scoop. Hey guys, we're here at the homecoming game for the women's basketball team. They're playing Robert Morris. It should be a tough matchup, but we'll see. Let's check it out. The Colonials started off the game with the advantage over the Explorers by outshooting them 16-11. to This was a hard-fought game by the Explorers who made 29% of their shots in the first quarter. In the second quarter, the Colonials shot four straight points, but then the Blue and Gold had a 15-6 run to tie the game. They made impressive shots in the second, making 87.5% of their free throws. They kept the momentum going in the third by outshooting the Colonials 8-3. Robert Morris responded, making the differential 9-5. The fourth quarter was very back and forth. Throughout the game, the lead changed 22 times, and it was mostly in the fourth. As seconds bled off the clock in regulation, the game was tied, forcing the game into overtime. The lead changed five times in overtime. Kayla Sproul started off overtime with a basket off a fast break. In this game, she had a career high of 19 points. The Explorers played good defense throughout overtime with a good amount of rebounds. The Blue and Gold did miss some opportunities, allowing Robert Morris to score three times off a turnover, which gave LaSalle the first loss of the season. For Sportsline, I'm Gia Lancey. So yeah, the Jacob sisters were on fire. They had a combined 16 points against Robert Morris. And mm -hmm. it's nice to see freshmen making an immediate impact already. Yeah, I mean, both of the Jacobs, we talked about Claire in the interview with Mountain, mm -hmm. and she had a great 20-point performance in the opening season on the road. And she didn't have as many shot attempts in this game. Both of them had a combined seven shot attempts from the field. So um, really lived off free throws, but yeah. that free throw percentage was not ideal. 56% from the line, you really got to knock those down to steal wins like that, especially in overtime. Right. And from three as well, it really was a struggle. They shot just below 24% yeah. from beyond the arc. I was also happy to see um, Sophia back and, you know, see her yeah. already performing in their first, their first few games, you know. Yeah, and that's the opposite presence, just being able to have a presence down there in the trees. It's just huge for this Explorers team in the yeah. future. Last Friday, women's soccer traveled to St. Louis for the Atlantic 10 semifinals to take on number one St. Louis. LaSalle was seated at number four going into this matchup. The Explorers fought hard throughout this game but could not find the back of the net. In the 27th minute, the Billikens scored on a header goal that was just off the hands of junior Claudia Jenkins. The Blue and Gold took six shots throughout the game but two on goal and they 
faced the Atlantic 10's first team keeper, Mary Newhouse, who gave the offense a run for their money. Jenkins had three saves on 17 shots taken by St. Louis, and this concluded the season for the Explorers. The men's soccer team postseason hopes were dashed this weekend as it suffered a road loss to Dayton in the quarterfinals of the A-10 Conference Championships. The beginning of the match looked promising for the Explorers as senior Pat McCarthy attempted two shots on goal in the 14th minute, both of which were blocked by a strong Dayton defense. The Explorers responded to the Flyers with strong defense play, defensive play until Dayton's Kingsford Ajay registered the Flyers' first goal. The blue and gold remained down by one going into the half. In the second half, the Explorers allowed Dayton to establish momentum as three goals were tallied by the Flyers without a response from the blue and gold. With the Explorers unable to recover from Dayton's four-shot lead, the match concluded with a crushing 4-0 Dayton victory. The LaSalle men's swim team hosted their first meet of the year on November 9th and lost to both Delaware and Ryder University. Senior Norm Gregory placed first in the 200 freestyle while also placing second in the 500 freestyle and 100 freestyle. Freshman Sam Henninger continued to ball out, finishing first in the 100 meter and adding a second place finish in the 300 meter. The last of the top performers was sophomore Ian Venter, who took first in the 200 backstroke. On the women's side, for the other hand, two of the, one of the first two meets, excuse me, they've won, but losing to Ryder. Senior Emily Wolbert placed first in the 200 fly with a time of two minutes, six seconds. Sophomore Phoebe Shea, took gold in the three meter and picked up silver in the one meter. Rounding out the Explorers' big day was Sarah Rosetto, who earned second in three events during the meet. That's it for recaps, but don't go any anywhere because I'll sit down with two senior water polo players and talk a little bit about their mustaches, so sit tight. What are they, oh my god, I swear, these sports show hosts just get dumber and dumber as time goes on. Like, I can't believe people are actually paid money, real money, more than what I make at my job to say this stupid stuff. Like, I can't believe this crap. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to lose it. Like, this is just, how can they even, like, hey, what you doing? This stupid sports show. You know, these people have no idea how the game of basketball is played. Not at all. Hey, you're not you when you don't watch LaSalle TV. Here, let me show you. Have much more left, but the only reason you're not you when you're not watching LaSalle TV. To stay up to date, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Welcome back. Earlier today, I got to set, sit down with Joey DeFusco and Keegan Riley. Sending it to Keegan Riley. Welcome to this week's edition of On the Sideline. I'm Keegan Riley. He's not the one doing the interview. I am, and I'm Gia Lancey. So I'm sitting down with water polos, Keegan Riley and Joey DeFusco. All right, so you guys are both considered two of the founding fathers of the LaSalle men's water polo team. So how do you guys feel like being almost at the end of your career? Um, I personally feel ecstatic, you know, uh, coming to an end, it's about the journey, it's been a crazy one, you know, crazy like seven, eight years of my life, all this, all this work, you know, and then coming into a D1 program and being able to, you know, start at the ground level and, you know, help build up a tradition of, you know, hard work and dedication, it's just been really cool. Yeah, pretty bittersweet. Uh, Obviously, with the end of season comes the end of college, uh, which is upsetting, but uh, also pretty excited to be done with, you know, getting up early for all the practices and all that. So. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. 5 a.m. today? Yeah, it was yeah. That was when yeah. practice started. Uh, practice started at 6. Okay. Yeah. You got to be up at 5.30. You got to get there a little bit early. You know. That's rough, yeah. Yeah, you can't be caught lacking, you know. Yeah, yeah definitely. Senior year, Tough, especially. Yeah. So um, this season, you guys had more wins than any other prior season. So. What do you think that was due to, like the new talent or just like more years of experience? What do you think? Um, definitely, uh, I feel like we all have just kind of started to hit our stride um, with the new coaching staff. Uh, 
we've uh, really had some, you know, more organization and, you know, direction in our play. So I feel like we've just meshed as a team more. Yeah, I'd say our chemistry has gotten better. You know, the longer we're together, the better you play together. Uh, so that's pretty important, as well as uh, bringing in some new talent. That always helps. Uh, yeah. So um, earlier this season, you guys did get your first Division One win. So did you guys feel a sense of accomplishment after that? Yeah, that was pretty nice. Uh, I mean, it's about time, you know. It's taken four years. Uh, Navy was actually our first game ever. Yeah, as a team, ever. And ever. Uh, got huh. beat pretty bad. So that was actually the last team time that we'll be there at that pool. So leaving with a win. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So like, going into that game, were you like expecting to get? Beaten bad like you did the uh, first no, time? No, I mean, not really expecting you. Never. You never go into a game like that. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, you're going with your heads high, you know, do your best, and whatever happens, Come happens. Out with a W. Yeah. Like we did. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. So, what is your mindset for the final stretch in the next two weeks of games? Like, did you guys do anything different to prepare for these final weeks or anything like that? No. I wouldn't say anything different than usual. Uh, um, yeah, nothing really. Just like, the realization, though, of like it coming to an end is just, you know, made me put my 110%, you know. We got, what, like six more practices left ever? Yeah, 10 days. So it's been like, man, you know, you can really, you know, just might as well hit it hard while, yeah. you're, while you're still there. Yeah. yeah. So do either of you plan on continuing your water polo career or, like, coaching or anything like that? I'm going to move to Croatia and play in a professional <laughs> league. There you go. Interesting. <laughs> I'll probably... Play Masters, <coughs> stay in shape, maybe, you know. Uh, yeah, definitely a Masters team. Stay definitely out of the pool for a little team. while. Yeah, take it's a cold, break. Cold definitely going to need a break. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and, like, do you, do you plan on, like, doing, like, coaching or anything like that in the future? Uh, not at the moment, but you never know. Yeah, you know, whatever falls in the lap will fall in the lap. Yeah, you know <laughs> okay. what they say. <laughs> so in an earlier interview with two other water polo players, they were saying that as a duo, you two were the funniest. Do you guys agree? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I think everyone's pretty funny on the team. We all bring a unique uh, flair. Yeah. So what about you two, like, makes you funny? Um, pretty good sense of humor, you know. <laughs> Everything, everything's pretty funny, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it just, can be funny. You know, it's, it's a weird duo. You know, he's from Vegas. Yeah. He's a sand person. And I'm from, like, Chicago, which is usually pretty cold. Yeah. Cold place, so it's just. But how does that make you funny? Just though? like the <laughs> different, the different cultures, the oh, different okay, cultures. Yeah. Okay. Coming uh, together. So come do you guys together. have any like funny stories that like specifically from you two? Um, Joey once ripped a door off the <laughs> stall in St. Jerome. Okay. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty fun. That was pretty so fun. that was like one of the highlights of your yeah, water polo career. Yeah, definitely. And freshman highlights. year with the bang. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, that was freshman year. So yeah, that was, yeah. You were funny then, too. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, I've been funny all, all, all year. Okay, right? gotcha. Yeah. So, all right. As before we wrap up, like, we got these stashes going on, right? Oh, yeah. So, like, what about, like, where did you, where did they come from? I think uh, he was messing around about Yeah, I was been, I've been <laughs> trying to get it going for at least, like, two years. Yeah. I've been, for, you know, to get the whole team. The whole involved. team. Yeah. I've been trying okay. to get the whole team involved for so long. And then, uh, it's a team building thing. Joey this year was kind of just like, yeah, let's do it. And let's then we it. got, originally, like, it was all the seniors. Like, so it was like six dudes, like, with all mustaches. But then, yeah. you know, it's pretty we got cool. some lamos who stopped doing it. Gotcha. Uh, Derek. Yeah. Luke Lecter. I'd call a few of them out, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It I is would. what it is. So, like, I know, Keegan, you've been compared to, like, Baker Mayfield with this match. How do you feel about that? Um, you know, I've, I just hope to get, you know, more girls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you think you look like Baker Mayfield with the sash? Or like, uh, I saw that picture and I was actually pretty scared. Yeah. That was really. I was like looking in the mirror. I never thought I did before, but then I saw that picture and I was like, Whoa. <laughs> what the heck? That's funny. Yeah. All right. Well, thing. thanks for staying down with us and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Yeah. Back thank to the you. Desk. So that was a fun interview. You know, some goofballs over there, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's interesting that they played Navy as their first game ever. And then that was also their first Division One win. Yeah, I mean, we talk about it for women's basketball as well, but like just like the night and day shift yeah. has been really great. And there are the two, you call them the founding the fathers founding of it. The founding fathers, yes, <laughs> definitely. And I mean, I think that you just, you got to give this 
this team some time. Obviously, yeah. this is their fourth year. And, like, uh, they're already producing and performing a little bit. So, like, you can't expect too much from them because they are such yeah. a young program. They are LaSalle's youngest. But I, I think that they'll get there. I think that they gave them a good establishment. So. And they just thrive off that core, which is there in the center, of, which yeah. we'll be missing. Yeah. But, yeah, that was great. We have one more quick break, but when we come back, we'll check out this week's Explorer Report. Buckle up. Who is this? You should already know who's watching it. What do you mean? It's us. LaSalle. LaSalle? LaSalle TV. Oh, we are watching LaSalle TV. South Sports action this upcoming week, so let us welcome Aaron Holly for this week's Explorer Report. Thanks, Gia. In this week's Explorer Report, the men's basketball team returns home to the Tom Gola Arena this Saturday at 2 p.m. to host Big Five rival Temple University. In the most recent challenge between the two teams, Temple had a 75 to 67 victory over LaSalle at the Leocora Center. This season, LaSalle's current record is 1-1, one one, while Temple's is 2-0. Facing Temple this weekend will put the Explorers play to the test. Some key players to look out for on the LaSalle team are junior David Beatty, who has an average of 15 points per game, and sophomore Ed Crosswell, who is averaging 12 points per game. Also look out for freshman Brandon Stone, who had 12 points in the homecoming win over Iona last weekend. The Explorers need to keep an eye out for Temple's Nate Pierre Lewis, who is leading his team with an average of 17.5 points per game this season. The way to explore success this weekend includes teamwork and high spirits from everyone on the team. Yeah, so this game is going to be tough, I think. But, I mean, big five games are always going to be close. Right. And I'm excited. It's, it should be – I think a lot of people show up. And, I mean, Temple is 2-0, but they didn't play elite teams. So, like, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not impressed. And their shooting is pretty much abysmal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they do have some pretty good offensive numbers. I mean, you saw Pierre Lewis, he's 17 and a half, averaging a double-double through those two games. Plus, it always comes down to it, like strength of schedule for the whole season. But in my opinion, I think in those earlier games, teams are better when they have easier competition. Because you get to, like, it's almost like a step up from practices when you see some of these games. I mean, Drexel's going to be nothing to fear. I think LaSalle could beat them later in the season. Morgan State was no, no big threat either. But right. So that's why I think Temple might be able to come in, and we'll talk about our picks, but I, they're going to be a tough game here in Tom Gola. Yeah, I mean, I think so too, but I think the offen our offense is going to produce. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely do. I mean, you've seen a lot of differences in that homecoming game. It was led by Beattie with 15 and then 12 for the duo of um, Stone and Croswell, and yeah, I think right that's going to be that's going to be a great matchup there. Stone, Stone has been coming off the bench for Croswell. They're both great um, young scoring machines. Definitely. Both bring differences. Stone's kind of more of like a stretch big, where Croswell is just a big presence inside. And yeah. they're both going to be on Pierre Lewis. That's going to be their main defensive assignment. And yeah. I think that's going to be must-watch basketball. I think right. that's going to be a lot of fun. I think so, too. And, I mean, I think that the defense will step up, too. And I think that they're going to go into this game with a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, they're still in this mindset that they're taking one game at a time. Mm -hmm. But – it's about that time to think about Temple, and I think every year Temple's a good game with us, so yeah. we will see. And it's the exact opposite that you saw in this Iona game. Iona, I talked about it, they were a run-and-shoot team. They were really good um, getting down the court and shooting from outside, but this is two half-court offensive teams, and it's going to see whoever is 
playing chess instead of checkers whether between Temple's coaching staff and Howard yeah, and his company. So it'll be able to see who schemes out better plans, who has bigger games, and who knocks down. It's going to be another one of those games. It comes down to free throw percentage. It comes down to your turnover rates. Just It's going yeah. to be a difference in the numbers. Yeah, you know, it's always going to be a close game. And I have it as a close game. So I have 75 to 70 LaSalle. I'm confident. I don't. I think Temple's going to come in and win 82 to 74. Okay. I mean, I, th I think either way it's going to be a close game, and obviously we agree on that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it'll, it'll be back and forth. But, um, again, Temple just coming into this court. I think LaSalle's going to come in numbers. I think that their crowd's going to be there, and it's going to be tough yeah. to play. But Temple, I think, is going to be a big road win for them, and they have a chance to be up there with Villanova and Penn mm -hmm. for the Big Five, in my opinion. I don't know. Well, I hope you're wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but, all right, let's see Aaron's pick. I think LaSalle's going to take the victory – with a score of 67 to 63, but it's going to be a close Big Five matchup. Okay, so yeah, she agrees with me. Bleeding blue and gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in the lone party, even though I'm wearing the jersey. But <laughs> I mean, again, I mean, other people got to look out for. Rose is averaging 15 a game, Moore averaging 11 and a half, and then there's six other players on that team. Temple is just has been very deep in those first two games with getting scoring off the bench and just defensive presence outside of their stars. Where LaSalle, I mean, at the same time in the second game, Isaiah Dees led the uh, led the Explorers in scoring, but he had the least time on the floor for their right. usual starting this five. Is true. I mean, I just think, I don't know, I think that they're going to step up. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're in this time in the season where they are going to step up and they need to make these wins where they're going to, you know, set themselves up for the rest of the season. Yeah. And they already are doing a great job of it because they couldn't win until A10 play last year. So again, these early wins will be huge. Yeah. Well, that just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the Explorer Report, be sure to tune in for next week's coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com or check out this week's edition of The Collegian. Also, check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TV and on Twitter at SportslineLTV. We welcome you to send your thoughts and suggestions there. Be sure to answer our poll this week, what color is my hair, strawberry blonde or regular, which it obviously is regular. <laughs> For Aaron, Steve, Keegan, and our Swordsline team, I'm Gia Lancy. And I'm Tyler Small. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you at the game.